wake up now, aren't you? You've got yellow demon eyes, haven't you? Do you wake up? Or would you rather not? Hello Archie, this is my current work position, <laughs> so I've got my laptop, my notebook and the dog and a little blanket that I got from the charity shop and this is a good place to work, oh and a cup of tea, I'm ready to go, so it saves having the heating on all of the time and it's really cold today, it's really cold, I have had the heating on gone off now so I'm just trying to keep hold of that residual heat yeah. and Archie's snuggling up too so I'm going to get on with my blog. Hello I'm Shoestring Jane and welcome back to my channel and I seem to be doing my filming on my bed again and that's because it is just freezing today it's so cold as I just said um, I'm snuggled up with my blanket and the dog and just having a little think about my week. So I had intended this week to do a proper vlog like a daily Sunday Monday Tuesday what I did each day vlog but two things happened a I just kept forgetting and b my week has just really consisted of it feels like walking walking the dog or just walking myself and working just sitting at my laptop neither of which are very interesting at all to vlog however I've done a few things um, I found a few, a couple of apps that I haven't used before which help you live more sustainably so I'm going to show you those. They're worth exploring I think. We did have one really lovely walk to start our week so we tend to on a Sunday now if there's nothing else going on we will take a walk but we'll explore somewhere in our local area that we've never been to before or we haven't been to for a long time. So I think in these times post covid not all of us have the time have the money really or the will to travel anywhere um so if your finances don't allow you to go anywhere if you can't afford a holiday if you can't afford any kind of big day trips to big cities or anything like that um or if you're just scared of going to places where there are lots of people or thinking about a holiday where an airport is involved then you know you can start by just exploring your local area and we found that even though we we've walked quite a bit in our local area we thought we really knew lots of places we found a couple of real gems lately that we didn't know were there so um the first one this week we started with Arlesford Creek which and we've walked really close to this before we just hadn't walked this particular route and it was absolutely beautiful and it was a gorgeous very sunny autumn day which always helps doesn't it so I'll show you that walk to start, kick off with. Found a, we found a ruined church. It's destroyed by fire in the 70s apparently. Interesting. You can see the bones of the church. bright sunshine today. It looks like the, the graveyard's still in use.
missed you. Justin's inner 10 year old coming out again. <laughs> don't crash into the tree. I really don't want to go to A&E today. <laughs> what do you think, Arch? My cooking efforts have been a bit basic this week. I haven't really felt like I haven't had much energy this week. I do. I think I've mentioned in previous videos that I have fairly mild, I suppose, compared to other people, fibromyalgia. And I do control it by doing yoga every morning, gentle stretching, trying not to eat too much of the kind of food that will aggravate it. So that will tend to be sugar, alcohol, lots of carbs. Um, when you just feel like eating lots of carbs in the middle of winter, um, it just makes me very, very achy and very tired. So I need to just kind of make myself eat healthy food. Having said that, <laughs> I did make a really old fashioned pudding this week, which wasn't full of sugar. So I'll show you that. And lots of soup. And I've made two lots of butternut squash soup. And I will leave the link below to that. I'm making some delicious autumnal squash and carrot soup with ginger today. I'll put the recipe link in my description box. So nice. It's made with coconut milk, so it's vegan. It's really creamy and delicious. I'm supposed to use four cloves of garlic in this recipe. But look at these. They're enormous. So I'm going to make do with two. Well, this is a blast from the past. When I was a girl, I used to love something called fluff, which is basically jelly whisked up with evaporated, evaporated milk. So I'm using sugar-free jelly because I'm trying to cut back on the sugar I'm eating and a can of evaporated milk from my stores. And I just really felt like something sweet that wasn't too full of sugar. So I'm making fluff. I think that's pretty done actually so I'm going to put that in the fridge leave it to set and that's dessert sorted as you can see I've eaten quite a lot of this I really like this this is the consistency I probably should have whisked it up a little bit more because it's still a bit jellyish but this is the consistency so you get a real fluffy bit and it's just milk jelly basically isn't it an old-fashioned milk jelly but so nice yum one of the things I did manage to achieve this week, despite feeling generally tired and out of sorts really, was to finish the Christmas shopping and get most of it wrapped. I mean, there's some bits I've still got to do, but only small things and I haven't wrapped those obviously. So I've managed to do that. So I feel like I'm in control of Christmas completely now. I've got most of the food apart from, you know, fresh stuff that I need to get later and know exactly what we're going to be having. So I feel like I'm in control. I'm not going to stress out about Christmas. I'm just about to start wrapping my Christmas presents and went up into the loft to find the bits and pieces that I keep for Christmas and found some hidden bags and boxes right at the back from like previous years, um, including four brand new unopened rolls of Christmas wrap, which I'll give to the girls because I think they probably, my daughters have left those here. But so many gift bags, boxes, rescued bits of wrapping paper from previous years, um, little baskets, like a whole box of gift bags there. Just so many that I think the fabric I bought from the charity shop to wrap my presents in is going to last another year and I'll get rid of this stuff first. So I'd say I'm not, I'm not buying wrapping paper anymore, but I may as well use what's here. And the gift bags get reused time and again, which is why I've got so many. But yes, let's go see if we get rid of some of these. I have been sorting out Christmas and my Christmas presents. Um, and these are the little gift baskets for my two nieces and my nephew. So um, I've got them some second hand and I'm going to put a Christmas card with some second hand money in it as well. <laughs> so I've bought them a, a Got given them each a second-hand book that I have read and really enjoyed. I read that recently with my book group. It was great. Um, some things I got from the charity shop, just some, a little makeup bag, a mug, a bamboo toothbrush, 
um, and a shampoo bar. So each of them have got this. This is a shampoo bar. It's easy to show this one. Um, so there's the my nephew has got something slightly different. So he's still got a shampoo bar. He's got a different mug and a different book. He hasn't got a makeup bag. He's got another notebook instead. And yes, I'll give them some money in that as well. And then I'll wrap them up. So I just need to get the cash out. So I'm getting organised for Christmas. As you can see, the garden's looking extremely wet. So I've got to take Archie out. But I'm going to get wet. I've got to think it's going to have to be a, a quick round the block. We've had such beautiful autumn mornings. I suppose we can't always have it the one way. So I have to put up with the rough, rough with the smooth when you're a dog walker. But not really looking forward to this walk. Here goes. So it started out OK with just a bit of drizzle. But it got a lot worse. I am once again very happy about my human marquee coat. I can't really show you this way around, but it doesn't even let a single drip in. It's absolutely brilliant and it's really warm. So it's so soggy. Not very nice at all out here today. She doesn't care. He's quite enjoying snuffling around. He's got his coat on as well. I've been trying not to have the heating on too much again at home, so I've either put the fire on or sat with a blanket over my knees which is good as well. You could be forgiven for thinking that I have been in bed all day long but I've actually been out for two dog walks since I started filming this this morning and you can tell because my hair's getting more and more wild and curly with the bad weather. So we've just got back from the worst dog walk. It was so windy, it's so wet and really really cold. It's proper proper winter set in now so Archie didn't care, he just wants to go out with his ball. I mean, we didn't want to go out with his ball at all. Anyway, it has to be done. As I said before, you have to take the rough with the smooth when you're a dog walker. Oh, sorry about wobbling around. So anyway, I was talking about some apps that I have been looking at this week to help my sustainability. And the one I really like is this one. It's My Footprint um, and it's WWF, Worldwide Fund for Nature that is, isn't it? Um, and they've calculated minus 8.13 tonnes. Um, it's a very kind of, it's not very accurate, I guess. It, it kind of looks at your transport and how much stuff you buy and whether you whether you travel. And the thing, I think, if you did two foreign holidays a year, that would be way up. That would be through the roof. And because obviously I don't fly anywhere. But they didn't really ask me about traveling to holidays because obviously we do drive places um but they did ask if how much time i spent sitting in a car on a daily basis which isn't very much because i work from home so um and i don't buy a lot of stuff obviously this year because i'm doing a second hand year i've bought very little stuff so 8.13 tons is compared to most of the uk is low but compared to the rest of the world it is not as low as it could be. So there's a lot of room for improvement. And what I like about the app is that it sets you challenges or you can go through the challenges. And if you achieve those challenges, then it improves your carbon footprint. You can recalculate. So, um, for example, you can do a challenge to wash your clothing or your laundry on 40 rather than 60 or 30 rather than 60. Um, and it'll set you a target to do that so many times per week or um, you could set your dishwasher to run on the eco program and I, I used our eco program quite a lot when we first got our dishwasher but it didn't wash very well so um, I stopped using it but I put it back on the eco session as part of my challenge just to see if I can get it to work okay um, and hopefully I will be able to and then I'll you know these these things are cumulative aren't they um, and yeah, there are all sorts of challenges you can do. You can adopt an animal from, you know, an, an endangered species of animal, maybe. Um, and just loads of other things you can do as well. So I quite like that. It's quite interactive. So, you know, it's not going to make a massive difference, probably. But it, to me, because I'm fairly, I'm fairly eco-friendly and I'm quite aware as it is. But if you really were just starting, that would be a real eye-opener, possibly. Um, 
and it could be quite useful. So, you know, I suggest have a look at it. It's called, what did I say it was called? It's called My Footprint by WWF and it's a free app. And the other one that I've downloaded, which I haven't really explored fully yet, so I can't really give you a very, very good idea of how how effective it is, is called Kitsch. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's spelled like kitchen without the N. And it's the idea is that you input all of the food in your house and it will tell you what to do with it, what recipes you can make with it. It You have to say whether you've actually thrown any of that stuff away. I think it might even give you little prompts to, to use things. Um, it gives you tips on, you know, fridge temperature and planning your portions and gives you recipes and how to reduce your waste and that kind of thing. Bread hacks, it's got that kind of thing. So it's, it's useful how to compost food. Um, and the reviews say it's brilliant. I uh, Because I haven't really used it yet, I'm not sure. It looks quite complex to set up, so I'm not sure about this. I think I'll have to come back to it in another video and let you know how I got on. But it's called Kitch, K-I-T-C-H, if anybody wants to explore it. And the idea is it helps you to lower your food waste. There's also apps that I use regularly already, like the Olio app, for example, and the Too Good To Go app. Olio app, you can get free food and free stuff, and Too Good To Go, you can get the magic bags, which are very cheap, and, you know, stuff that the restaurants may otherwise, in the past, have thrown away, or the, the food outlets, whatever it is. So a lot of you will know about those already. So I like all of those. I'm going to do a whole video at some point on the best apps to improve your sustainability, but I want to try some of them out for a bit longer before I do that, so I'm kind of researched it a little bit more. Anyway, so that's my week. Not a thoroughly exciting week, just a bog standard week really. But um, anyway, that's me for, for now. Um, let me know whether you, there are any apps that you really love in the comments to improve sustainability, anything you could recommend, and if you've done anything good this week as well. Remember, you can come over to my Facebook group, My Second Hand and Frugal Life, if you want to chat to like-minded individuals about saving money. And don't forget to give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, if you've watched this at the end and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It would really help me grow my channel and I really appreciate it if you do. See you next time. Bye for now.